listeners and viewers, welcome to Kaduna State Ministry of Education radio and TV e-learning program designed for our SS3 and other students staying at home due to the coronavirus pandemic. The present administration under the able leadership of His Excellency, Malam Nasur Ahmed El Rufai is positioned as always to ensure that under his leadership, our students are not left behind in all areas of human endeavors, especially education. Kaduna State is the center of learning. Therefore, we want to ensure that our students excel in their forthcoming examinations and beyond. Students and other learners at home are given this opportunity in order to continue learning as education is a continuous process. Different subjects will be taught in this program to assist students to perform excellently in the forthcoming senior school certificates examination being conducted by NECO and WAEC as soon as schools reopen. Teachers making presentations will always provide their names and phone numbers during each presentation and they can be contacted for questions, further explanations and or clarifications. The following numbers and contacts can also be reached for expression of any concern or observation. 090-865-00545 or 080-383-62072. Our website is www.education.kdsg.gov.ng Our email education at kdsg.gov.ng or education.kdsg at gmail.com Our YouTube channel, Ministry of Education, Kaduna State Our Twitter handle, at Kaduna underscore MOE Or our Facebook page, Ministry of Education, Kaduna State Stay safe, stay at home and learn well Thank you, happy listening and happy viewing Hello, my students you are welcome to another segment of e-learning. My name is Mariam Ahmed Gidado. I'm here to teach you biology. And our topic for today is pollination in plants. But before we start the lesson, the topic pollination in plants, if you can recall, our last lesson, we looked at reproductive system of flowering plants where we described the flower and we were able to examine the four floral parts of the flower. We were able to describe ovary depending on the position and also we treated placentation in plants. So pollination in plant is a topic or is a continuation of our last or our previous topic. But before we start the lesson, before we start the topic pollination in plants, I want us to look at some terms that are used in describing flowers. Because along the length of my discussion, I will be mentioning some words that if you don't know the meaning of those words, my explanation might turn difficult. So I would like us to describe the terms so that you understand what the terms mean, then we go into our real topic, which is pollination in plants. So to start with, we have inflorescence. What do we mean by inflorescence? When we say inflorescence in flower, we mean a group of flower which attach themselves to a common stalk or axis. In our last lesson, we described the stalk. That is the pedestal. That is the handle you use in holding the flower. So when you have so many flowers attached to a common stalk or attached to an axis, those flowers, that is you have many flowers, not one, not two, many of them, on a particular stalk, those flowers are termed as inflorescence. This kind of inflorescence is found in flamboyant. Flamboyant flower is a very common flower in our environment. So in my last lesson, I said try to identify flamboyant because it's very common. So if you identify flamboyant flower on the tree, the way the flowers are clustered in one place, the way the flowers are clustered in one place, that give, will give us typical example of inflorescence because the flowers, they are not singly on the leaf axis. 
they are in a bunch. So that is an inflorescence flower. Then the next one is supposed to be solitary. Solitary is just the opposite of inflorescence. Inflorescence, we said a cluster of flower. But solitary, we mean a flower that is singly attached to a common stalk on a particular branch. If you are able to identify hibiscus flower, in, hibiscus, in, in the hibiscus plant, you find one or two flowers on a particular branch. The flowers are not uh, clustered in one place. You find a single flower on a branch, another single flower there, another single flower there. So when you find this kind of situation on a particular plant, those flowers are term solitary flowers. Then the next word to be explained is unisexual flower. In our last lesson, we were able to identify the four floral parts of the flower. The, the calyx, the corolla, the andrusium, and the gynusium. Where we said the andrusium and the gynusium are the reproductive organs. Andrusium is the male organ. Gynusium is the female organ of the flower. So when you have a particular flower where you have only three of the floral parts, that is, you have corolla, you have calyx, then you have either of gynesium or andrusium. That is, you have one of the reproductive organs, not both of them. That flower is termed as unisexual flower, meaning that flower is a male flower or female flower. If you see the corolla, the calyx, andrusium, meaning that flower is a male flower. But if you see the corolla, the calyx, and the gynesium, meaning that flower is a female flower. So when flower is, uh, is a female flower, the, the flower is described as pistillate. And that kind of flower is found in popo. I think my student, you know what popo is. So if you look at a popo tree and you are able to identify the flowers of a popo tree, you find out that that flower is either a male or a female, but it doesn't contain all the organs of the male and female. Also in maize, if you look at the maize plant, it is either the flower is male or the flower is female, but it doesn't have both the two reproductive organs. So that is a condition known as unisexual flower. And as I, as I said, if you see a flower with gynesium, the flower is described as pistillate. But when you see a flower with a stamen or with the andrusium, that is the male part, that flower is, de is described as staminate flower. Then the next one is bisexual flower. When we say bisexual flower, we are talking of a flower that contains the four floral parts, the, the calyx, the corolla, the andrusium, and the gynesium. As I said, the andrusium and the gynesium, they are the male parts and the female parts. So when a flower is having all these floral parts, that flower is called a bisexual flower. If you look at the flower of hibiscus, Pride of Barbados, you find all these structures. The, the sepals will be there, the petals will be there, the gynosium will be there, the andrusium will be there. So this flower is a complete example of bisexual flower. Or it is also called a hermaphrodite flower. So a hermaphrodite flower is the same thing as bisexual flower. Please, anywhere you hear hermaphrodite is the same thing as bisexual. Then the next uh, uh, the term is monoecious flower. A flower is said to, the, to be monoecious when the male and the female flowers are found on the same plant. Just like we have in maize. In one, flower, in one plant of maize, if you look at it, you find that the male part is there and the female part is there. That is a condition known as monoecious. Dioecious. We say a flower is dioecious when the male and the female flowers are found on different plants. When you have this plant and this plant, but of the same species, you have two plants. The male flower is here, the female flower is on another plant. That is a condition known as dioecious. That is, if you have two plants, but they have to be of the same species, please don't go and compare mango and orange. But when you have a mango tree, example, I'm just giving an example. When you have a mango tree, and on the mango tree you are able to find the male flower, the, the next mango tree you are able to find the female flower. That is the male and the female are on different plants. That is a condition known as dioecious flower. It's also found, an example is also found in Popo. Then the next one is essential part of a flower. The essential part of the flower 
are the reproductive part of the flower, the androsium and the gynosium. We also call them the stamen and the carpels. In the last lesson, I said anywhere you hear androsium and you hear stamen, they are referring to the male part. Anywhere you hear gynosium and you hear carpels or pistillate, they are referring to the female reproductive organs of the flower. So essential parts are those that take part in the reproductive process, and they are the male and the female. Then we now look at the non-essential part. The non-essential part are the calyx or the corolla, or we call them the sepals and the petals, because in our last lesson we said petals are referred to as corolla, that is their collective name. Then we said sepals, they are referred to as calyx. So when you have a flower that one of the parts uh, so the, the parts that are not directly responsible for the production in plant, those parts are known as the non-essential part of the flower. So the pedicel, the calyx, epicalyx, corolla, these are the non-essential part of the flower. Then we have perfect flower. What is a perfect flower? A perfect flower is the one that has both the male and the female parts of the female organs in one plant. You have the scapules, you have the Stamen. So that flower is term perfect because it has all the organs that are needed for reproduction. So when we say flower is imperfect, meaning what the flower is lacking one of the reproductive organ. That is the flower is either a male or a female. Just like in purple, you have or in maize, you have a female flower different. You have a male flower different. So if you pluck that flower, that is an example of imperfect flower because it is not having all the organs. But a perfect flower is like the hibiscus. It is perfect because it has all the parts in one flower. Then the next word is supposed to be complete. A complete flower is a type that has naturally all the four floral parts, namely the calyx, the corolla, the androsium, and the gynosium. Still example is found in hibiscus. Hibiscus and flamboyant, pride of Barbados, they all have this floral part in one flower. So that is an example of a complete flower. An incomplete flower. An incomplete flower is the type which lacks one or more of the floral part. Just like, still the example is maize and popo. Maize and popo, the flowers is either male or female. So it's lacking one of the part. It's either it is lacking the male part or it is lacking the female part or it is lacking the female part. So that is an example of incomplete flower. Then a regular flower. A regular flower is that uh, it has all the members of the whole on it, arranged on the receptacle. What we mean by a regular flower is a flower that has all the complete uh, floral parts of the plant. And if you cut that flower vertically, the half will be exactly the the, the, half, the first half will be exactly like the second half meaning what is on the left is what is on the right or what is on this half is what is on this half when you are able to cut a flower into two vertically and you are able to find all the parts on both the two halves that flower is called a regular flower but when you find a flower after cutting the flower into two what you find on the first half is not exactly what is on the second half. That flower is termed as irregular flower. That is when you cut it because some of the sites, when you cut them, they are not representing here, but they are representing here. So that is an example of uh, irregular flower. Example is found in Pride of Barbados. In Pride of Barbados, it has four uh, petals, sorry, five, but one of them it's not looking like the others. The one is, it has a structure different from the four, the, the four petals. So when you cut the flower vertically, you might not get the same, uh, the, the halves will not look exactly the same. What you have on the right might not be what you have on the left because of the fifth petal that is not looking like the others. So that is an example of irregular flower. Okay. Now that we have discussed all the terms, or we have discussed some of the terms that I will be mentioning along the line of my discussion, let us now go into our topic. Our topic for today is pollination in plant. What do we mean by pollination? Pollination, if you can remember, we have discussed the male part and the female part of the flower, where we said there is a filament with an anther and pollen grains inside the anther. 
So the filament and the anchor and the pollen grains make up the male part. Then we have the stigma, the style, the ovary and the ovules, which are making up the female part of the flower. So those pollen grains we said, they are the ones that contains the male gamut or the male sex cells inside the pollen grains. While inside the ovary you have the ovules which contains the female uh, gametes. So if you want, if we said sexual reproduction is the fusion of this male gamete and the female gamete. So how do they fuse in flowers? Because we know flowers, they are not animals. They cannot move from one place to another. But how does the male gamete meet the female gamete? So pollination is one of the process that makes this gamete to meet together. So the transfer of pollen grains, we said inside the anther there are pollen grains. So those pollen grains contain the male garment. So for them to go and meet the female garment, they have to be moved. So that movement of pollen grains from matured anther to a stigma, that is the process we call pollination. I will repeat again. When, anthers, when uh, pollen grains are being transferred from a matured anther, please remember always to say matured because we know reproduction doesn't take place in uh, in, in organisms that are not matured. So whenever you are going to talk of pollination, remember to say matured because they have to be matured before that process can be completed. So pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from a matured anther to a receptive stigma. In most species of flowering plant, external agent brings about pollination. As we said, plants are not animals. They do not have legs, so they cannot move from one place to another. The male gamete cannot use legs to go and meet the female gamete. They need an external agent to make this transfer. Since we say pollination is the transfer of pollen grains, from the anther to the stigma. So who is going to make that transfer of pollen grains? So they need agent, but we are not going to look at the agent here is going to be on the next topic, in our next topic, the agent of pollination. But as now, I just want you to know that there are external agents that are involved in transferring this anther to the stigma. And that will take us to types of pollination. Basically, we have two types of pollination. We have the self-pollination and we have the cross pollination so let's take them one after the other what is self-pollination from the word self my student when you say self you are referring to yourself you are talking to yourself or you are referring to what you do yourself so from self-pollination here the plant pollinate itself that is what you mean by self-pollination so if you can remember when i was explaining those words we said bisexual flower a flower that has the male and the female organ at the same time are on the same flower so since they have the male like in flamboyant the male plant is there uh, sorry the male uh, the male gamete is there and the female gamete is there so the only thing is for the male gamete to transfer itself to the female gamete within the same flower so that is what you mean by self it is the flower that is pollinating itself it is not going to another flower that is what you mean by self pollination it takes place when mature pollen grains from the flower falls on the stigma of the same flower or the same flower plant or that of another flower and the same plant what we mean is transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the same flower or else the same flower but on the same plant because in one plant in one branch you can have two three flowers so if flower A on top pollinates the stigma of flower B down, but on the same plant, that is also self-pollination because it is the plant that is still is pollinating itself. So either it pollinates the stigma of its own flower or pollinate the stigma of another flower, but on the same plant. So that is what we mean by self-pollination. And it is found in P, cotton and tomato. These are examples of plants that can be, that are being pollinated by self pollination then the next one is cross pollination what is cross pollination this occurs when mature pollen grains of a flower are transferred to the stigma of a flower of another plant of the same or closely related species cross pollination is when pro pollen grains of another flower 
pollinate the stigma of another flower on a different plant, please not on the same plant, but they have to be on this, of the same species. What I'm saying here is you cannot have a mango tree here and an orange tree. You expect the pollen grains of mango tree to pollinate the pollen grains of orange. No, because mango and orange, they are both fruit, but they are not of the same species. So when flowers of mango plant A, uh, the pollen grains pollinate another flower of a mango tree plant B, that is cross-pollination because it is being transferred from one plant to another, but of the same species. Mango cannot pollinate orange. So it has to be mango tree flower and a mango tree flower pollinating itself. That is cross-pollination. It has crossed to another plant, not self-pollination. So example is found in apples, pumpkins, and other, and most flowering plants are cross-pollinated, are pollinated by cross-pollination. Majority of them, very few of them are pollinated by self-pollination. So we are going to the next, uh, that is features favoring self-pollination. We mean there are conditions or there are devices that you find in some plants that makes them to pollinate uh, either self to, to take uh, self-pollination or cross-pollination. So what are those conditions or what are those devices that make self-pollination favorable? One of the features is homogamy, and the second one is cleistogamy. So what is homogamy? Homogamy refers to the maturation or ripening of the male and the female reproductive organs of a bisexual flower at the same time, which is also known as simultaneous or synchronous hermaphrodism. What we mean here is when male and female organs of a flower matured at, different, at the same time, that is a condition called, uh, called homogamy because we said they have to be matured or they have to be ripe before pollination can take place. So if the organs are maturing at the same time, that is a condition known as homogamy and it encourages self-pollination because if anta is ripe, stigma is ripe, so they are all ready for reproduction. But if one of them is not ripe, reproduction cannot, sorry, pollination cannot take place. So when they are ripe at the same time, like in Pride of Barbados, where you have the stigma and the, the anther on the same plant. So if they are not ripe at the same time, they cannot self-pollinate uh, each other. But if they are ripening at the same time, meaning self-pollination can take place. So homogamy is one of the uh, devices, or one of the conditions that makes flower to undergo self-pollination. And uh, the, homo the homogamous condition promotes self-pollination through one of these. A gentle breeze or a gentle wind that blows, it can make the pollen grains to pollinate. Then a visiting insect may transfer the matured pollen grains to the stigma of the flower. If they arrive at the same time, when insects visit those flowers, they can pollinate uh, itself. Then self-pollination may occur when the matured stigma push away out of the corolla tube during which they are brushed against anthers. All what they are saying is either by wind or by insect. So either wind brushes, uh, blow the flowers, they can have self-pollination because they are all matured. They are all ready for pollination. Then the next uh, condition is clistogamy. Clistogamy, there are some plants that the flowers never open. Like the flower of granot, or we say peanut. The, 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 the name we usually, we mostly know is granite, but when we say peanut, we are still referring to granite. So flowers of peanut never open. So since they don't open, definitely there is no any way that that flower can be pollinated apart from self-pollination because the anther and the stigma are inside the flower and the flower has closed. It doesn't open. So self-pollination is the only option for that flower. Example is the peanut. Uh, flower and even the pea that is the beans family generally mostly most of them the beans family they are being pollinated by self-pollination because of the clistogamy the flowers do not open so cross-pollination cannot take place the only option is self-pollination so these are the two conditions that make self-pollination and very possible homogamy ripening at the same time clistogamy flowers that do not open the male and the female are there and they ripe at the same time and they are closed so the only option is self-pollination then we now look at what are the advantages of self-pollination one of the advantages self-pollination ensures pollin 
uh, pollination, especially in bisexual flower. That is in bisexual flower where the flower has both the male and the female organ on the same flower. So it encourages self-pollination. When the male and the female are there, you don't have to go and look for the male or the, the female doesn't have to go and look for them. They are in the same plant, the same locality or the same area. So that encourages self-pollination. Then there are less chances of failure of pollination. Self-pollination does not waste pollen grain. What we mean is since this one, they are being pollinated by itself. It doesn't need another agent to come and pollinate it. So it is very uh, sure of pollinating itself. But when flowers wait for pollinators to come, the pollination is not guaranteed. But in self-pollination, there is guarantee of pollination. And the pollen grains, since they don't have to travel for a long distance to go and pollinate, so they are not being wasted. They are being utilized because they are pollinated by self-pollination. Very few pollen grains can pollinate the flower. What we mean in cross-pollination, we need a large number because at the, when they are traveling, so many of them are being disposed. Very few of them reach the flower. But in self-pollination, since it is within the flower, very few of them that are available can easily pollinate the flower. I hope my students, we are going together. Then this advantage of self-pollination. It leads to production of weak, weak offspring as a result of repeated pollination. In self-pollination, characters, there are no uh, varieties. The character of the male and the female is what is going to be produced in the offspring. So that offspring, if after it's, uh, it has grown, is going to produce again. It is the same character that is being passed from one generation to another. And that makes the individual or the, the plant or the offspring to be very weak because they are inheriting the same character from one generation to another. There is no uh, variety within them. So that makes them often produce are less adapted to the environment. That uh, uh, inheriting of the same character for so many generations, it makes the individual not to be adapted to the environment. There are environmental conditions that can make them not to survive. So if they are being self-pollinated, they don't have varieties, they are not usually strong. So they don't adapt to environmental conditions. There is no mixing of, of genes. That is, there are no characters, as I said. There are no new characters because they are being self-pollinated. When you have two individuals, the same character, and they are pollinating themselves, definitely they produce child that is just like their own, that, that looks, resembles them exactly. There is no difference. So that is what is happening in self-pollination. There are no new characters being inherited by the offspring. Okay, my students. Uh, the next we are supposed to look at is features favoring cross-pollination. The features are three. One is dichogamy. The second one is self-sterility or self-incompatibility. Then the third one is unisexuality. But because of time factor, my student, we are going to stop here then to continue in the next lesson. But before I go, I have an assignment for you to do before we meet in the next class. So the assignment is just only one. That is question 1A, what is pollination? Question 1B is explain the two types of pollination. My student, I will take it again. The questions are only two. Question 1A and question 1B. Question 1A is what is pollination? Question 1B, explain the two types of pollination. So my student, I want you to, to do this assignment before we meet in the next class. So before we meet in the next class, and I have references for you, for your assignment. We have uh, Essential Biology for Senior Secondary School. You can consult that book for your assignment. And also Modern Biology for Senior Secondary School. The reference I have for you are two. Essential Biology for Senior Secondary Schools. And we have Modern Biology for Senior Secondary School. My student, I want you to consult these two books in order to do your assignment. So my number is 070-3158-6058 and also 080-285-67623. So I will be waiting for your response and observation. I will repeat my number again. My, my number is 070-3158-6058 and 080-285-6623. So my name is Mariam Ahmed Girado and I will be waiting for your response, observation and relax. Good day, students.